Dark Horse plans to launch four comic book miniseries in fall 2014, all based on the Fox movie properties Aliens, Prometheus, Predator, and Alien vs. Predator. Each miniseries is four issues long and will take place in one cohesive universe, culminating in a finale issue tying them all together. They're calling the event Fire and Stone. So why is this exciting? Dark Horse actually has a long, rich, celebrated background when it comes to creating comics based on licensed material, including such titles as Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Terminator, and Predator. That's enough of that because we don't want to get sued by Disney. Yep. Dark Horse is also responsible for a large portion of what Star Wars fans consider the expanded universe. That includes all officially licensed material besides the six theatrical films. They're also responsible for publishing exceptional work on many other licenses, not to mention groundbreaking creator-owned material such as Sin City, Hellboy, Concrete, Martha Washington, 300. <laughs> yes, many people think of Dark Horse as the house that Star Wars built, but they've also published great comics on lots of other properties, such as Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Terminator, Predator, Indiana Jones, Avatar the Last Airbender, Mass Effect, Dragon Age, Conan the Barbarian, The Strain. Ugh. Star Wars is great. I like Star Wars. There are other things besides Star Wars. They've pretty much established themselves as the bar setter for licensed comics, and with good reason. Dark Horse treats its licensed books with respect and sincerity, without an ounce of cynicism. Just as an example, Dark Horse published a Robocop vs. Terminator miniseries in 1992. Ridiculous, shameless cash grab, right? Except it was written by Frank Miller and drawn by Walter fucking Simonson, two of the most revered comics artists of all time. And it was remembered fondly enough to have been recently reprinted in a hardcover and an oversized gallery edition showcasing Simonson's pencils at full size. If Dark Horse is the house that all these titles built, not just Star Wars... Seriously? Is that gonna happen every time I say Star Wars? If Dark Horse is the house that all these titles built, not just that sci-fi series we shall no longer mention, then a good deal of that house's foundation was laid by their very first licensed comic, Aliens. In fact, on the Dark Horse website, on their timeline page, at the very bottom of a long list of hundreds of accomplishments, at spot number five is the following. July 1988, Aliens number one hits the stands and response is tremendous. Issue number one is reprinted six times in order to fulfill demand. Let's go back to 1986, when Chernobyl got chernobyl and Reagan defined an era. 86 is the year commonly referred to as the year comics grew up, with the publication of The Dark Knight Returns, Watchmen, and Mouse. As an industry, we're about to see the rise of the comic book artist rock star and sales figures of single issues the industry has yet to see again. But before all that, a guy named Mike Richardson launched a comic book company called Dark Horse, aptly titled in an industry dominated by Marvel and DC. Dark Horse debuted with two comics, Dark Horse Presents, which would eventually become an award-winning anthology series still being published today, and Boris the Bear, a satirical comic whose first issue has Boris ironically taking on parodied versions of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, who themselves were originally parodies of other popular comics at the time, such as Daredevil, New Mutants, Cerebus, and Ronin. 1986 was also the year that a little-known film called Aliens was released into theaters. Other films of note this year, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Top Gun, and Howard the Duck. When Aliens came out, it blew everyone's mind and expanded on the universe created by Ridley Scott. And I'm sure that it undoubtedly left people wanting more. Speaking of wanting more, let me talk for just a moment about what it's like to be an Alien fan. Well, as an Alien fan, I'm generally starved for material. It's not a franchise like Star Wars or Star Trek that's infinitely merchandisable. One thing is for certain, there is a lot of Star Wars merchandise out there. Ugh. <laughs> like, you ever see that movie Wally, -E, where the clan's just covered with garbage? <laughs> if they zoomed in on it, <laughs> it would be a lot of Star Wars garbage. <laughs> Alien started out so strong, with two of the most influential science fiction films of all time. But after that... It was a droid. Disconnected. There were bits and pieces of him all over the place. The corporal was impaled by that safety support. And the girl? She drowned in her cryotube. Well, that was depressing. But this is actually a good movie. It's just a really drastic change from Aliens. Well, Ripley jumped into a lake of fire, so I guess that's it for the series. Oh. That's interesting. Ripley's alive. And she's an alien.
Oh, it's ironic. Stop the red! Put down your weapon! Come on, man. Aliens is an anime. And what the hell is this thing? Oh, the director's French. Oh, look. Yes, kill her. Kill her, kill this movie, kill it with fire. <laughs> well, that has to be it. No one could possibly convince Fox to make another one of these. Oh, what? Aliens vs. Predator? Oh my god, that's fucking awesome. I can't believe they're making a... Oh, that guy. Well, maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll... Son of a bitch! Is it over? Is... Is it safe to come out yet? Nope. What's this? Is... Is it good? Oh man, those environment suits are cool! Is it good? I think it's good, yeah! Yeah, I like it a lot, it's a good movie! Rum, 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 rum. Plot holes, rum, 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 rum. running in a straight line, rum, 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 rum. space Jesus. Rum, 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 rum. Hey, 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 hey! Don't ruin this for me. I like this. It's hard not to get at least a little excited when anything alien related gets announced, but after so much abuse, I have learned to temper my expectations. Oh no, you don't fool me, video game that's too good to be true. God, I hate being right. Wouldn't it be great if the Alien franchise continued to grow and evolve instead of becoming more and more forgettable? Let's go back to 86. Like I said before, Aliens came out, blew everyone's mind, and expanded on the universe created by Ridley Scott, and I'm sure it undoubtedly left everyone wanting more. But there was no internet painstakingly reporting on every shred of development in the movie industry like there is today. With fans left to wildly speculate what a third film in the Alien franchise might look like, or if it would even exist at all, Dark Horse publishes Aliens No. 1, the first in a miniseries. Along with the next two story arcs, the first three Aliens miniseries acted as a sequel, taking place ten years after the events in the Aliens movie, with Newt stuck in a mental hospital, Hicks drinking and fighting his way through PTSD, and Ripley nowhere to be found. His name is James, James Cameron, Cameron, the bravest pioneer. No budget too steep, no seat too deep. Who's that? It's him, James Cameron. The precedent set by James Cameron for bigger and badder was taken further. In comics, creators don't have to worry about a special effects budget. They can just go nuts. They can do things like reintroduce the mysterious space jockey as a character. They can visit the alien home planet. They can even explore what has always felt like the obvious, natural progression of the alien story the infestation of Earth. The comic book pseudo-sequel was a hit. By the end, Ripley makes a triumphant return, and humanity takes back Earth, leaving everyone hungry for more. I'm sure readers wondered with anticipation, what other adventures could we hope to see starring Ripley, Hicks, and Newt? Oh, right. With the release of Alien 3 in 1992, it was pretty clear those characters would have to be put to bed. For the sake of continuity, the names of the comics characters Hicks and Newt were changed to Wilkes and Billy, and the comics Ripley was said to be a synthetic. Yeah, I know, it's pretty weird. However, because everyone died in Alien 3, because you know it's not really an alien movie unless everyone dies, it left every Aliens comic series going forward wide open for exploration. Because Earth was almost destroyed by the aliens in the original miniseries, the Xenomorph was no longer a secret it was a creature that everyone knew about. Using this as a springboard, Dark Horse continued to publish the comics in miniseries form, each with relatively self-contained storylines and characters. And although there wasn't much direct continuity between the series, each new creative team would take ideas from previous books and build upon them, making them more and more complex, creating an alien's canon in ways no one could have conceived of on their own. Dozens and dozens of stories, exploring different themes, different locales, concepts, technology, not to mention expanding on the behavior and biology of the creature itself, enough to warrant its own Animal Planet nature special. Similar to what it was doing with the Aliens books, Dark Horse was also publishing Predator comics that expanded upon the mythos of that film franchise. After the success of the Aliens and Predator series, 
Dark Horse saw an opportunity to combine two separate mythologies that seemed bred for each other. In 1990, Dark Horse published Aliens vs. Predator, a crossover blockbuster that's much better than the movies would have you believe. That it's just a royal rumble, Godzilla vs. King Kong, Freddy vs. Jason Cashin. And technically it was, but it was also a well thought out royal rumble that respected both franchises. It also solidified the bond between these two creatures in the heads of fans forever. The crossover formula proved to be so successful that it even bled into other licenses such as Terminator, Judge Dredd, Superman, and Batman. Just so you know, Batman wins. The Aliens comics turned out to be a much deeper universe building experiment than anyone could have ever imagined. It also attracted many of the industry's most talented creators. When I said deep universe building, I was not kidding. I mean, look at all this shit. Look at all those books. That's like, I don't know, it's a lot. It's like a billion comics. If you were an Aliens fan, you thought like, oh, it was just these movies. These movies are great. And then I told you like, no, there's actually also like a billion comics that you can go and read. It would just blow your fucking mind. If any of this stuff sounds cool, then by all means, go back and read it. It's all been reprinted in about a dozen omnibus volumes. Boom, look at that, big heavy book. Each one's as big as a quarter. Look at how fat that is. That's a quarter, that's not a nickel, that's a quarter. If you had all these books on a desert island, you would never want to leave the desert island. You could just stay there forever, just read Aliens comics till you die. There's like Aliens vs. Predator, there's like two volumes of that. There's like six volumes of Aliens, there's Predator books. There's, like, there's, there's just so many books. I don't even know what to do with all these books. As awesome as the original Aliens comics are, they are not a prerequisite for enjoying the relaunch. The whole thing kicked off in fall 2014 with Prometheus number one, followed by Aliens, Alien vs. Predator, and finally Predator. We really had a lot of fun making this video. Uh, hopefully somebody watches this video. If you did watch this video and you enjoyed it, please let us know. Uh, let us know if you liked it, if you want to see more. If you have a series that uh, you feel like hasn't gotten enough attention as much as it deserves, if people only just knew about it, they would enjoy it, let us know about that too. That might be one of my favorite comics also. Uh, you know, the reason I'm doing these is because I like to hear about this stuff. I love listening to other people talk about something I haven't heard about yet. And hopefully that can be that video for somebody else.